Hello guys! A part of the very important railroad was destroyed in the result of sabotage inside Kursk region. This is the railroad that is used by Russian army for logistics and supplies of weapons to the front lines and now it is paralyzed. And all because of the work of beautiful people, partisans. And I realized that we do not discuss this very important aspect of Russian war in Ukraine and now Russian war in Russia. There are different groups, there are different movements that actually help Ukrainian armed forces both on the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine and inside Russia. Some of them are Ukrainians, some of them are Russians who dream about the day when Putin's regime falls, and perhaps there are other nationalities like people from Belarus, Georgia, and all those who know what is life under the Russian Empire or the Soviet Union. Definitely something you would not wish to the people you love. That's why, trust me, I'm Ukrainian. All of you want Russia to be defeated and Putin to be imprisoned. This is the most important thing for safety and security in this part of the world, if not globally in general. So let's discuss about what happened in Kursk region on the railroad and more about this movement in Crimea and inside Russia. My name is Anna, I'm from Ukraine, I'm in Ukraine, and if you want to see Kremlin defeated, subscribe, we will discuss that on the channel soon, and please share the videos that you consider interesting and important, as unfortunately Russia is very active in our informational sphere, spreading fakes, uh, demotivating people, and we need to fight that too. So... Uh, there are definitely strong partisan movements, both inside the Russian Federation and on the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine. I personally feel a lot about these people who are waiting for the liberation of their homes and I hate it when some politicians start saying that we can sacrifice territories for the sake of for the sake of what? Appeasement of the dictator and war criminal. And also for the sake of betraying all of these beautiful people who now risk their lives performing super important tasks for the global security. And I know a lot of stories from uh, Melitopol, from Luhansk, Donetsk regions, from Crimea. And I was really happy to hear the interview of the commander of the Ukrainian army in the south direction who claimed that the numbers of partisans inside the Crimean Peninsula is growing and actually they help a lot, uh, specifically with intelligence, providing information about the locations of Russians, air defense, what's happening in the Black Sea and many other things. By the way, many of those successful operations by Ukrainian drones or Ukrainian missiles are actually possible only because of the information they provide or some preparatory things that they are uh, doing. And it is extremely heroic taking into account the context in which these people have to operate, being constantly uh, in the focus of Russian FSB and Russian army, hiding their telephones, uh, pretending that uh, they accept the reality, for example, on the peninsula. And uh, that is why I will never accept changing Ukrainian territories, exchanging Ukrainian territories for the frozen conflict, some years for Russia to be uh, restored and uh, thus killing more people and uh, sacrificing those who are our friends, who are our family. Never advise such things to Ukrainian. No one will accept it here. And if you agree with me, please subscribe, demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine. This is indeed very, very important for us, especially now in this challenging time. So what happened in Kursk region on a happier note? A serious sabotage took place on a railroad that connects uh, some of Russian logistics hubs, these evil Russian military supplies, uh, depots to the front lines and they desperately need it especially taking into account that Russia's counter-offensive in Kursk region failed uh, but now after the destruction of some part of this railroad and the responsibility was taken by 
the partisan movement Atash. I'm sure many of you have heard about that name. Hopefully we will hear and read more about that. Maybe sometime in future this will grow into a civil or political movement. That would be great. Actually, because right now when I'm trying to visualize the future of Russia after the collapse of Kremlin, after the defeat and the zombifying of the population, I still cannot clearly see who is the potential leader of, I don't want to say Russian opposition, I want to say who is the leader of the new Russia. Let me know in the comments below, do you see someone who is capable of doing the job right now? Or, of course, after the liberation of Crimea, of Kremlin and Crimea, Crimea, first Crimea, then Kremlin, or first Kremlin, then Crimea, I don't mind. But after the liberation of all of these beautiful territories from the Kremlin goblin. And this sabotage in Kursk definitely paralyzes the uh, logistics of the Russian army for a certain period of time. And with the very well-chosen Ukrainian strategy to target Russian ammunition depot for during just a week, uh, we will clearly see lack of supplies on the front lines from the Russian side, I think during a month. And this is actually very good. This will resemble something Ukraine had to go through a couple of months ago because of this prolonged discussions whether or not the world wants to defeat Russia. But right now, Russia will experience something similar, serious shortage of missiles supplied by Iran and North Korea and destroyed by inexpensive Ukrainian drones. By the way, this very fact that Russia now mainly uses missiles from the North Korea, from the details provided by China, from uh, Iran, it is a vivid illustration that, no, it's not just Ukraine that needs help. Russia, that many describe as such a big country, such a strong country, is now totally dependent on the military supplies from its allies. So yes, guys, this is not a local conflict. This is a war between the democratic world and the authoritarian regime. And unfortunately, democracies are always looking for the ways to avoid conflict, to avoid war, and it can actually take a very radical form of appeasing that dictator when authoritarian regimes are ready to continue as long as needed until they achieve their bloody aims. And you know why? Because they don't value human life. I hear that quite often from different Ukrainian uh, vloggers who actually want to persuade the world that we need to be led, strike back, that we need to be led to defend ourselves 100%, if not a thousand percent, because Russia is able to continue for centuries and all, not because they are strong, not because they are smart, not because their allies are much better than ours, but because they don't value human life at all. The price of human life in Russia is nothing. It is for the army of the United States, for the army of uh, the United Kingdom, France, Poland, that the life of the soldier matters. And there are certain numbers after which the country will think about the negotiations or something. With Russia, it does not work. You can see how many soldiers they have already lost for nothing, literally. Um, have a look at the numbers they sacrificed and even those parts of territory that they temporarily occupied, they are definitely not worth that. But this does not frighten neither Putin nor the population. They have this very awful proverb, I don't know if you know, but it's very typical when they learn about the loss of uh, a soldier, it's very common to say like, our women will give birth to the new ones. Well, okay, that's how the world develops. But is it okay to not take into account human life at all? And this is what kind of enemy we have. And by we, I mean not just Ukraine, I mean all those countries that actually value human life. That's the only way to continue on this planet.
I know you know that, but unfortunately there are still people hoping there is a way to return back to the old normal. No, unfortunately Putin stole it from us and the only way to return back to the new normal is to defeat this Kremlin goblin. Share the video on your social media platforms and join me on X, Instagram, Discord and Threads. The links are in the description of this video, same as the link to our beautiful merch shop that has lots of t-shirts and sweatshirts and hoodies because autumn is coming in this part of the world. And they have lots of good illustrations uh, depicting Ukrainian cultural heritage objects, weapons, including drones, and actually work well as reminders and conversation starters about Ukraine. And we need that conversations. Uh, thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and sponsors of the channel. And most importantly, thank you for being friends of mine and friends of Ukraine. Slava Ukraina!